Big Z Reviews. Dear David, it's a new horror film that just came out this past week, and it's currently like available for uh, on demand, and it's pretty bad. Do you know how to find out who this handle belongs to? You really think a weird account is haunting your apartment? <laughs> Dear David, he was only 10 when his mother went insane. He is your son, and you put him in a coma? <laughs> So for a little bit of a, set, a setup for this, um, this is mainly about Adam Ellis, and it's based on a true story, but it's based on a BuzzFeed true story. And the funny thing is, you know, I've been following um, Adam Ellis, who is a, a cartoonist, like a comic book writer, a co- and, but like he, for a couple years now, but I wasn't too familiar with the Dear David storyline, which was just a thread of tweets and then a post on BuzzFeed. And, like, I, but I've followed him, like, more recently. Uh, he does a lot of, like, really cool, like, um, like, horror short story comics, along with just, like, little bits of life and stuff like that. And, uh, like, it's funny, I, I checked, like, his Twitter after watching the movie, and he would say something like, I had, I had nothing to do with the movie, but, but, uh, thank you for, for saying that you liked the original, um, Twitter thread of cartoons I wrote, and it was kind of like he he le- he was left Buzzfeed five years ago, and it's funny. This is kind of like the true horror story is working at Buzzfeed, you know. Because it is it's like funny, but the Justin Long plays uh, Augustus Prue, who who plays um, Adam Ellis in the movie, but Justin Long is his boss. And it's all about, like, I mean, I think this is, like, made by BuzzFeed, but I feel like they kind of, like, it, it was very in your face, the Buzz, buzzfeed ness Like, all the really bright, and then, like, every computer is white, and just the just giant BuzzFeed is all that's on the screen. And they're all talking about topless, and they're worried if they're going to be fired, or how many clicks they got. And it, that like, that's a true horror story in this film. But, like, the idea is that, like, from the original Twitter thread and, and the BuzzFeed post, was that, you know, Adam Ellis, he has always had, um, like, kind of night terrors. Like, um, he suffered through um, sleep paralysis throughout his life. And that's where, like, you wake up, but, like, there's a, there's a drug that your brain releases, like, when you're, sleep, when you're sleeping and you're dreaming. So you don't, don't act out what you're doing in your dreams. That's why a lot of times people that have, like, restless leg syndrome, like, don't have enough of that in their body. But, like, and what happens, though, you wake up and your your brain, it, like, is, you're still releasing the chemical to make it, you paralyzed. But you're aware, you're awake. But then there's this whole phenomenon where you have visions and you can hear stuff. You have, like, a lot of people feel, like, a pressure on their chest, like someone's sitting on them. And a lot of things they say, like, they see, like, a sleep paralysis demon, and this one, in the, in, the, in the Twitter thread, he starts seeing this little boy with, like, half his skull uh, crushed in. And the whole in the Twitter thread, like, he thinks that, thinks he'd grown, like, getting worse and worse. He thinks he's being haunted. And then he, he says, like, he, um, Dear David talks to him and he wants to play a game where he asks him, you can basically he asks two questions, you ask a third, but you don't ask a third question. And I think that that's where this movie... I feel like it's one third a biopic about Adam Ellis, uh, one third a creepy pasta horror film, and then one third the original Twitter thread comic that he wrote. And for the biopic aspect of it, it makes it even weirder because like they gave him a writer's credit, Adam Ellis, because he wrote the original stories it's based on. But again, he had nothing to do with this film. And he's not portrayed in the best light. Like, he's an asshole to every single person in the film. And he's, like, an alcoholic. He's, like, maybe some stuff because of Dear David, but he's, like, suicidal. And he's just an asshole to every single person, like, online and he just, and people in his life, his boyfriend and his, um, his co-workers, his friends. He's horrible to everyone. And it is kind of odd, especially knowing that they probably, it doesn't sound like they had the best relationship, if that, like, he had no, 
he had no say over anything about they they did for this film. And I feel like, but like he's again, Adam Ellis has done some really interesting, like horror short stories, that would make a better film than this. I feel like he could have made this film better. Because I feel like there's a way he could have done this film that could have been very interesting, and they had the inklings of it, but it is so weird the the aspect of of the creepy pasta. Like randomly, you'll see like this. 14-year-old boy, like, and messing around with his friend, catfishing some dude, and then he does the Dear David game and asks uh, three questions, and then Dear David, like, really bad CGI, like, stuffs his mouth and kills him and makes him wet the bed. And, like, that's... Like, but that's just so... It's, like, random. It's, like, completely random, like, offshoot. And, like, I, I, like, and then there's, again, like, at the end, after the movie's over, like... Like the end credit scene is another Dear David, never like a streamer playing a Dear David game, and at least that streamer was someone that had made fun of Adam Ellis. Like there's, there's a way to combine them that it could have been interesting, but they just they just had no talent. The director John McPhail and the writers uh, Evan Turner and Mike Van Weiss, or whoever put it together, you know, it's just that it's there's just like nothing here, and like especially because like. Whenever you see, like, the dead kid, he... The, the CGI is really bad. It takes you out of it. I don't know why I could have just done, like, an actual little kid and, like, just gave him, like, um, painted green and then, like, t taken it away. And, but instead, it seems like the whole character is CGI. Like, it just looks really bad. And, you know, it's just that there's this whole other thing with, like, with, like, the story of this kid. They have some interesting aspects. And he could have done something interesting, but they just they couldn't pull it off, I guess. Like instead, it's just it's just like watching Adam Ellis being a dick to everyone for an hour and a half, and then at night every time he's haunted by the sleep process demon, and like it, it's just and he at some point he does like the investigation stuff and he's like going crazier and crazier, but like it, it's, it's all just not very good. And I, but it seems like to me, there's a way they could have fixed it. The way they could have combined all the different aspects, and that would be like because you know the whole thing. Part of it, the, the whole big part of the aspect of it, is uh, Adam Ellis. He is he is a a, a a gay man online with online popularity. So he's is a, like online bullied like a, by a lot homophobic comments, and he's getting drunk and he like posting back to them and like then there's the whole thing with that with it with like a mirrored is that this kid like in, in, the, in the actual in in the original comic it's like the kid was like just it was like an an accident in a grocery store or something like i think it was it it more like realistic but they actually well they some of the stuff they did could have been interesting like they have like him like in like this in like a, a basement and it's like an old computer, and he's like an old chat room, and he's like he posted his art, and then everyone just makes fun of him, and then like you see like later like he's looking at like a gay porn on the slow dial-up internet, the images loading up, and then the father catches him and like beats him, and then he kills the father, and then the mother comes and crushes his skull in with the with the computer monitor. And that is the whole thing that, like, he would have been in a coma for 21 years and he wakes up and then dies. And then now he's haunting the internet and haunting Adam Ellis. And I think that there's a, um, a way to fix it would be to have, like, you could do all that stuff. Is that it, it, it works. But, like, have it be not that, like, he's the kid's evil. You know, have it be, like, he's a sympathetic character. Like, you're trying to do the whole creepypasta thing. And that's one of the most interesting things, you know, that Ringu and Ring does is that Samara was a sympathetic character when you learn her background info. And a character is thought that they could, by, like, giving her a proper burial, that she could be at rest. Of course, it turns out that she is actually evil. And so, so the, you know, the, I, I love that twist of that, yes, she's a sympathetic character, but sympathetic characters can still be evil in the end. And I, I feel like they could have done that, like, you know, that instead, instead, like, instead of um, him killing his dad, 
Like he could have had like the dad kill him like, or not like hit him with something and that he's caving his skull or could have him after him being beat up for, for being gay, he could have like jumped out a second story window and like landed in the ground and like crushed his skull and he is in a coma. And then I, I kept thinking that like when he, like, they have this whole, they're so porn that like with, and it's funny because Anna's had nothing to do with this and Buzzfeed still uses his art all throughout the film and uses his name and uses everything about him for this film, which is, is a little odd. But um, a lot of times he's on Twitter and he's like, arg- arg- like he's feeding the trolls. And I keep thinking that, you know, that there's a whole thing that then he's mean to someone on Twitter after they're mean to him. And then he gets a comment from Dear David saying, like, why are you so mean or something like that? And that's his only comment. That's when he, the haunting starts. But I think that it would be interesting that say that if if we want to do that whole coma angle and say that so that a, a guy that that's been in a coma since like the beginning of the Internet and he wakes up and someone gives him a phone and he's like looking at the Internet, looking at what he what was like, what it's like today. And he finds this gay cartoonist that he really likes the work of. And then he say the whole thing that somebody says to someone that the die in a fire, D-I-A-F. And that, like, and he, and someone asks, like, what's that? And he's like, internet, show him. And then, like, there's all this I- images of them, like, cyberbullying this person for not knowing what that is. I think it'd be more interesting to have the Dear David character be the one that doesn't know what a modern-day internet abbreviation is. And then, like, when he's all of a sudden again cyberbullied after being in a coma for 21 years in shock, it kills him. And then he be he starts haunting Adam Ellis because he unknowingly sicked the internet on him for not knowing what die in the fire D I F meant. And I think it too big. It could be interesting idea that, like maybe then throughout the time you're, you're finding more of a backstory, and then you even bring in like the people start playing the game. Like he said, he does still like Adam Ellis, so he starts going after the people that are cyberbullying Adam Ellis and like saying homo- homophobic remarks and getting them to play his game when he asks three questions and if you do you die or whatever and I think that like and they do more like it, like I, I didn't like that like the demon was pr- the, the the dead kid guy or dead guy was so quiet the whole time and like and like the only time he played the game like he played it like in like a Twitter comment or some like in the comments and then oh you asked three questions oh oh I think it would be much more interesting if, like, when in, even in the original Twitter thread, he talked that one time he was dreaming and he played the game and then he unknowingly asked three questions and then that's when he woke up. So he thinks that that's, like, and that's, that was kind of the whole thing and, like, that was how, like, it, like the, sto- the short story ended in the cliffhanger. And I think that would be great to do that, like, maybe have something like, um, like the ghost talks to him and tells him that, you know, um, I, I, I need to, you need to tell my story, you know, tell it the right way and then like make a comic about it. And that like, he, he does that. And then like, he asks him, like he's the whole time being, they could playing the game, but being careful not to ask questions, but still getting like his story. And then he, he has to ask two questions and then like, he got the story that he, he, he wrote it. He d- did some new art. And maybe actually contact Adam Ellis and have him actually do some new art for the film. Uh, although the, I sound like the relationship isn't that great between, between, between the whole group. But um, like if they would they do that, then like he's about to post it on the BuzzFeed. And he, and he, he looks at the young boy. Like you mean say like as he's learning more about maybe... He's going from like the grotesque version, maybe more looking like just a little boy, innocent. And then he finally, he's not realizing he's still playing the game. He asked David, so if I publish this, you'll move to the light. You'll, you'll pass on to the next world or something like that. And like, that's the third question. And then the, the, the kid starts changing again into like the demonic look and he smiles. And then that's like, they had this whole thing. Like, it doesn't really make sense. Like, there's this whole, like, this long scene where he's, like, playing a video game as himself. And it's kind of an interesting idea. But I don't know if it quite works. But the whole idea is, is you know, the kid is, you know, this guy was, you know, in the coma for 21 years. 
So I feel like the game, if you want to do that, the game should look like, you know, an 8-bit game from 21 years ago or like a, a low-res game from back then. But like, if you want to, if you want to do that whole angle, I think one way to do it just end it as like at him realizing he said third questions and this, and then that and that would be the end. Or you do the whole angle that the original movie did that like maybe that Dear David is gonna possess Adam Ellis and now and Adam Ellis is not Adam Ellis. He's now Dear David, and any time you might be bullying his art and making fun of his art, you might be inviting Dear David into your life. And I think that that would be that be an that be an interesting way to do it, and I think it'd be much better than just a slow descent to madness with him being a dick to everyone and having a lot of like cheap jump scares with crappy CGI, dear David. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to see more of me, you can subscribe down below. Thanks.